Welcome to the Investor Expos for September 25th. I'm Jack, your host, and with me as always is Anna, running the production for all of our show today. We've got a great show today, uh, four amazing gurus, uh, a couple that we've had on the show and a couple new ones. A.J. Brown is coming back, Mike Hamilton and Jody Samuels are new, and Nicholas Santiago is uh, a returning guest. Um, so today we're going to go ahead and get right into it. We'll start with our first guest. Our first guest founded the TradingTrainer.com community, where beginners and experts alike could come together to work with AJ in making significant profits from their investment dollars. AJ currently teaches options trading and covered call writing in public and private workshops, as well as through Trading Trainer, community website, and newsletter. Welcome to the show, AJ Brown. Hi there. Thank you for having me back. I'm so excited. Hey, AJ. It was great to have you on last time. For sure. I mean, uh, the, the option strategies you, you do seem uh, no nonsense, uh, really straightforward. And uh, it seems like that's sort of your, is that your approach? Would you say your approach is, is sort of uh, to simplify things? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've, and, and that's almost an oxymoron when it comes to options, right? But the, the, <laughs> that's what most people won't even believe. They can't <laughs> possibly simplify options. The flexibility uh, has to be balanced with the amount of complexity, right? I mean, you can't go wrong, especially in times like right now where uh, the directional strategies we can do on a commodity or a stock is basically just either going long or short. That's all the options we have, two different strategies. And if the market's just going to meander sideways in a choppy fashion like it's been doing for the last couple of years, then what are you going to do? Well, if you open your eyes to derivatives, futures and options, I like equity options myself, then of course, now you've opened yourself to trading when the market goes up, down, but also sideways time passing by and even on the fears and comfort of traders, right? Because that's how implied volatilities are decided. So, so much there, but the question is, is distilling it down to, you know, what it is you need to know to get what your intent is. So, I mean, I've got tons of questions for you. Let's see, let's see. I'll just try to rip through them here. But uh, one is, how much of your trading is based on volatility? I mean, are you really just trading vol for the most part and then making good decisions on it? Actually, I'm trading instead on theta decay, which is time passing by. Um, and that's actually one of our programs here at Trading Trainer, which is what I'm going to be talking about today. Our other program is for the full-time options trader where we, we, we work with whatever is available at that week, and it's a week-by-week -week assessment. But for you know selling premium, we're really focusing on those type of investors that really don't want to make this a full-time thing, but they do want to benefit from some of the higher returns that can be from selling premium. So, you know, whereas putting your money into a mutual fund is going to give you something like five, maybe 10% if you're lucky a year, we're looking at making that much per month. Now, if you talk to directional option traders or implied volatility option traders, coming back to the simplicity discussion, you know, they're making those amounts sometimes every day, but the difference is, is they're very active. And so, uh, you know, there's this this thing out there about, you know, this guru's right, this guru's wrong. What I have found in looking at a lot of the various gurus programs is you really have to be clear on what you intend and have a, a very, um, not a come to Jesus moment, but a, an understanding of what you're trying to accomplish and matching it with what the guru is offering because I have found that every program of every partner I've ever worked on is doable if you sit down and actually follow in their footsteps. The question is, is sometimes their footsteps require you to be active during the day, require you to do something that your current lifestyle isn't going to allow you to do. And so make sure when you're picking a guru to follow and definitely pick a guru to follow because they've done this and you can just simply walk in their footsteps. Make sure you're not getting yourself into something where you have to make sure or you have to do something that your lifestyle is not going to allow. If you need to be available at a moment's notice to act on an alert and you're busy all day, like one of my clients, he was busy all day in ducks in big apartment buildings or in big commercial buildings cleaning out ducks like literally crawling through the ducks you're not going to be able to even reach down to your mobile phone and and do a trade when an alert goes off make sure you understand that 
right? And so I think that's really important when somebody's deciding which guru's program to purchase because you got to be honest with yourself. What are you getting yourself into and kind of do your due diligence, right? That actually makes perfect sense. I mean, there's uh, number one, the one thing I strongly agree with you is everybody needs a guru. I mean, I did when mm -hmm. I started on the floor in Chicago, and uh, nowadays it's so much easier to uh, actually find a guru and follow someone. But it's nice that you took it a, a, another step, which is don't just get somebody that you like the personality and you love the way that they trade, because if it doesn't suit your time schedule, then it's yeah. not going to make sense, and you're probably going to fail, unfortunately, even though that guru is giving you great advice. Absolutely. And not just your time schedule, but also your, if you will, risk um, tolerance because some gurus are going to do things where, um, you know, you have to have a comfort with being uncomfortable. And some of us, like me, do, are to the point in their age where they don't want to do that anymore. And so right. you want to feel comfortable or you want to be able to see a path on where you will get comfortable through repetition of trying something out. Uh, and if you're getting involved with a program and following in somebody's footsteps, it's kind of like when I started just recently to kind of play with this uh, jujitsu stuff. You know, next thing I know, people are punching me in the stomach and I'm thinking to myself, oh, I better examine what my intent is because I'm not sure I want to even practice getting comfortable at getting punched in the stomach. Maybe I don't need to do this. Right. <laughs> right. And so a couple more questions before we uh, uh, let you go and do the presentation here. One is um, I know a lot of people look into options. First of all, they, they have a fear of getting in because it looks so complicated. Mm -hmm. And then the, they start to, to read about the Greeks and they're out immediately. Forget it. It's too complicated. What, what do you say to those people? Well, so options are so multifaceted, as we talked about. And you can trade them. There's actually 27 different strategies, I think, that the, uh, the, the Harvard grads have come up with that you can trade with options. But you really only need to focus focus on a subset and, and filter out the noise, right? And again, that's where a guru is going to help. That's where uh, being in an investment group where you're all focused on the same thing. Focus, and I would also recommend highly, don't focus yourself on an option strategy per se because an option strategy is just a tool like a plumber's wrench or an electrician's uh, wire strippers. Rather, focus on a pattern. Focus on a characteristic of a market. Like, for instance, I really am into right now focusing on just finding patterns where time passing by is going to be the option profit mechanism and then I worry about the strategies later. Don't come and say, for instance, I want to learn diagonal debit spreads or I want to learn just how to do vertical spreads. Don't narrow your mind to a strategy. That's like a plumber coming in and saying, I'm only going to fix your plastic pipes with this blowtorch that I would use on copper pipes, right? You would probably say, get out of my house. You got to be able to be flexible enough with these strategies to apply it to what you're seeing at the moment, but looking for that particular pattern or whatever it is, characteristic, that might be a better way to arm yourself for success. So you Perfect. can you can definitely narrow down your focus, um, but narrow down your focus on the right thing because otherwise you might get yourself in trouble. Sounds great. I like it. Uh, all right. So we're going to go ahead and uh, turn the screen over to you. I want to say thanks to Vincenzo for uh, giving us a green light that the audio and video is all working perfectly. And uh, we're going to turn it over to you, AJ. You have 30 minutes for the presentation. During that 30 minutes, anybody that has questions, please feel free to ask him in the box. It's on the GoToWebinar control panel. Any questions you have, AJ will either answer if he can during or at the end, I will ask them uh, in a few minutes of audio Q&A. So it's 9.40 Pacific now, so I'll pick you back up here at 10.10, uh, 10, AJ, and I'll turn the screen over to you now. Thank you. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to blast through this a little bit because I want to focus on this topic of being able to structure diagonal debit spreads in a way that we will shrink risk and swell reward. In other words, this is going to be a master session. Now, we just got through talking about how this could be a complex topic, so I'm going to break it down. and I'm actually going to reverse engineer here very quickly what I'm trying to do, which is I'm trying to create a fund, if you will, out of my portfolio, such as you know, a market manager or a mutual fund manager might do 
that pays for me the returns I want. And so if I were to focus on that fund and diagonal debit spreads are a key piece of this, I would want my fund to have this graph and I want you to get this graph in your mind right now. Notice on this graph a couple of characteristics. First of all, the gains are compounding, right? That means they're gaining exponentially. That's what compound interest is. We also notice that there's a high line and a low line and the low line very quickly, if I annotate this graph, this low line gets me above the zero line very quickly between this one and two on the cycles, right? And then the high line goes up and there gets to be a point where it doesn't matter if the low line or the high line wins out, whether you get exercised or whether you get bailed out because the returns are so nice in either case, you don't care if the worst case happens to you or the best case happens to you. So take a look at that graph. We're gonna revisit it towards the end, but I wanted to just get this kind of seated into your mind because again, reverse engineering what I'm trying to do brings me to this question. And you've seen this a bunch of times, folks. I know you have. But what is it that you would request? I mean, which would you which would you actually go for? The 50,000 or would you go with the penny that doubles every month? Because if you understand this, where day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, we're all ready a week into the month and we've only got 64 cents. But then we keep going. I'm gonna bring us up to day 10. That's about a third through the month. We only have $5.12. Bring us up to about halfway through the month. We're nowhere near that $50,000. But I want you to understand, because many of you know the answer to this, compounding is very powerful but it takes time and it goes up exponentially. So you have to be in the game and you have to have the confidence in the game to continue going on and on because in the time where somebody could have given you all that cash up front in our instant gratification oriented world, we're now two thirds of our way through the month and we still haven't gotten anywhere near. We're about a tenth of the way. But notice what happens as we get towards the end of that month. At day 24, we're finally above the $50,000. And look what happens if you stayed consistent, if you kept the repetition going, repetition is king. By the end of one month, if you took that penny, you'd have $21,474,836.48. So don't underestimate compounding, which I'm not sure if it really was attributed to Albert Einstein, but definitely this phrase about compound interest being the most powerful force in the universe is true. So here's where I'm starting to reverse engineering this. If you earn 6% on your money every month and you compound that not continuously, but compound it just 12 times once a month, your investment will more than double every year. So now we can start getting into the understanding like if I have a a thousand dollars and I focus on this six percent target every month, then at the end of a year I'd have two thousand. At the end of two years, I'd have a little over four thousand. At the end of five years, I'd have close to thirty three thousand. And at the end of ten years, I'd be a bona fide millionaire. Or even more in, in, interestingly, is if I have a $100,000 portfolio, then every year I'm able to generate a little bit more than $101,000. That's more than the median income in the United States, which is $87,000. Now I know if you live on some of the East or West coasts, or even in the middle like Dallas or Chicago, $87,000 is not your median income, but $87,000 is the US median income for a salaried position, that's a white collar job, where you're gonna be working 50 to 60 hours per week. In this case, we're actually, if we set up our portfolio as a fund, our portfolio will be working for us, right? We're gonna be putting 15, 20 minutes in the evenings 
maybe once a month a little bit more work and some screenings, but it's not our time that we're making money on. Instead, it is our portfolio that's making money for us, right? That's where we'd like to be, at least in my mind. Just really quick, how many of you actually know who I am already? I mean, I visited here a little more than a month ago, um, so you might remember me, but uh, I'll just give you a couple of tidbits here. I'm on a really tight time schedule, so I'm the founder of this company, Trading Trainer. They call me the world's most disciplined options trader now. I actually uh, believe behind my back they call me the lazy option trader, and I like to think of myself as the efficient option trader because, like I was uh, talking earlier, I like to minimize the amount of time, complexity, effort I put into this because I got stuff to do. So I like to come in in the evening and I like to do a couple of, you know, thought processes and I've gotten into the groove of doing this just the same way every evening I brush my teeth. Every evening I sit down for 15 minutes and I look at my portfolio and decide if there's anything to do the next day and if so, what. But other than that, I don't like to focus so much on the day to day. I've been doing this since, since 1997. For my full time traders, I've been publishing daily insights since 2002 every day. I came up with this ebook that's been on countless people's computers over the last 16 years. Home study course I see on people's shelves. I started off. I mean, I'm not anything special. I have a degree in mechanical engineering. I have a master's degree in automatic controls. If uh, I had been employed by Boeing, I would hope that I would have helped them because that issue with their planes uh, doing their things lately is an automatic controls problem. I've also got a strong background in commercial business and investing. And over the last 15 years, my big focus is how do I learn how to teach people in a non-traditional way so that they can internalize what I'm passing their way so it's not gonna take you know four years, eight years, a whole lifetime to learn. So I call those accelerated learning methods. And I want you to also know I started probably in the same place you did. In 1997, I went to a ton of seminars my first year. I paid 27,000. Back then they didn't have webinars. Instead, what they had was go to a hotel conference room, sit there for four hours, maybe they'll get you to come back the next day, the Sunday, and come for the whole day, pay a little bit extra. Maybe at the end of Sunday, they'll get you to come you know, to a destination and spend three or four days. Um, webinars were not popular in 1970. I think that uh, 1997, a couple of people were using WebEx maybe, uh, but that was like in a corporate environment. So you had to go in person. Not only did I spend so much money every Saturday on those seminars, but then trying to do, employ those strategies, I wound up uh, giving 85,000, more than my college education cost back to the markets. I'll give you a hint. The answer is, is I looked around the room and I found that there were a whole bunch of schleps just like me showing up every Saturday and I cornered them at the water cooler and I formed with them an investment group. So we picked a couple of gurus that we wanted to follow their programs because they were going to go in our direction based on how we wanted to invest and how our lifestyles would allow us to invest. And then we got into a group and we held each other accountable. We looked over each other's works and we supported each other. And I recommend if you're not in an investment group and you don't have a like set of folks that you can check in with on a daily or weekly or whatever it is basis, do that now. All successful traders have some sounding board. Okay, the other component is uh, I have a foundation and then I'm gonna get back to the material. I like everybody to know about my foundation. Uh, I like people to know that in 2003, I took my gangbangers off the street of Denver and I taught them the same program on how to invest in an option premium that I'm teaching now. And we had some limitations. First of all, these gangbangers in Denver had a fourth grade education despite being in high school. Secondly, we had to do it in the public library. And at that time in 2003, the public library was only allowing us 30 minutes on the internet 
to per day. Um, after six months, I thought these kids were ready to go. I even took two grand out of my pocket and gave each one of them two grand, never thinking I'd see it back. And I'll tell you, every single one of them paid me back. They all wound up buying their own computers and at the time getting themselves subscriptions to DSL. Now, of course, we've got fiber and mobile and all of these other broadband solutions. But it, at that time, it was a DSL connection, which was a big deal. One of them actually put himself through Denver University. And we've rolled this every year. We've since moved it to Chicago, where we cater to the south side of Chicago. You may have heard of that on the news. You may actually have experienced it or experience it now where these kids are really, um, you got to give them alternative alternatives to their lifestyle because um, they get a real charge out of it. And it could be, in some cases, lucrative if they don't mind risking their life. So you got to figure out something. And we graduated 170 of these kids just this last year uh, through our program. We've partnered with the Chicago Board of Options Exchange on that. With that said, let me get back. What minimum returns must you make monthly on your portfolio to more than double your money annually? Half percent, one and a half percent, five, six, ten. Do you guys remember? If you said six percent, that's the magic number. So we focus with our portfolio on earning more than six percent. Just to give you some statistics in our program on the folks that I personally coach. Our numbers right now are between 12 and 15% per month, which means instead of doubling our money annually, we're doubling our money every five months, right? Okay, what are we investing in? And this is where the diagonal debit spread, where we're going to do a deep dive on that. We're selling option premium. So that's a little bit different than using options leveraged in order to get directional moves, which is usually people's original foray into option investing. And you know, this earlier I was asked, do I do implied volatilities? This is not about implied volatilities or anything that right now I would say takes a little bit more effort and a little bit more art, a little bit more skill that takes years to get to be able to map implied vols and even directional moves right now are as much your guess as it is mine. Instead, I'm talking about investing in that component of the option price that is relied on time passing by. And if time doesn't consider continue to pass by as consistent as it has, if a minute is no longer a minute, an hour is no longer an hour, day a day, week a week, I think we've got something more to worry about than just investing. I think our world will be breaking down. So with that side, we're selling option premium that decays away with time, theta decay. Some of you might be saying, what is option premium? Let's break it down. If you look up any option price right now, by the way, if you don't have some sheets of paper and a pencil if you're uh, and taking notes, you should get them. If you look up any option price, it's equal to it's in the money value and it's premium value. Now, the in the money value only becomes important when you are in the money. Uh, otherwise, if you're at the money or out of the money, the in the money, money value is zero. And therefore, the option price is whatever the premium value is. So if you look at an option that is out of the money, its price is equal to its premium value. Once you get in the money, you might already know this. If not, here's a lesson. The option moves dollar for dollar with the underlying symbol. So if the underlying symbol is $100, the option may be zero. It goes to 101. The in the money value now goes to one. The in the money value goes to two when the underlying symbol price goes to 102. They move in lock sync with each other. OK, so that's important to know about how options work. There's this premium component and there's this in the money component. What we focus on is the premium value. Now, you might even say, now, wait a second. You're already ahead of me. What is an option? An option is a financial instrument. We talked about it. it's called a derivative. They're typically bought and sold by market movers to hedge risk. That's the majority use of an option with stocks, indexes, exchange trade funds, but that's not how we're using them. We're selling premium. What we like to do is covered calls, covered puts, and then look at the bottom two. 
covered calls against leaps and covered puts against leaps. And I call them supercharged covered call writing. But what these actually are is diagonal debit spreads. And we're going to talk about them at depth in about three minutes. But first, let's talk about a simple covered call. This is a buy right. I took these prices about a week ago on GE. Buy right is, by the way, a worst case scenario. We like to actually leg into our positions, but in order to kind of show you exactly how this works, I'm going to illustrate a buy right. This is where you buy the stock and immediately sell the call against it to get a discount, right? To get an instant dividend. It works like a coupon. That 13 cents that I'm gonna get back for selling GE, that's going to decay away with time and ultimately expire worthless as if I gave you a coupon for a pizza for a dollar off and you never used it. And when the expiration comes, you never got to take advantage of that dollar. I did. I get it back, right, as a pizza company. So here's an example. $9.38 for GE, $0.13 cents for the call. That means I, because options are sold in lots of 100, I just made $13 per option contract sold. It's like a dividend get back to me. If GE closes above $10 on October 18th, I get that $10. I make 62 cents of profit on the fact that I bought GE for 938 and I get it for $10. I also get to keep that 13 cents I made up front. So I make a total profit of 75 cents, which comes out to 8.2% ROI. Not bad. That's more than our 6% that we talked about. And this is, like I said, worst case scenario. What if GE is flat? Well, then I get to keep that 13 cents and I get to do it again and again and again because it expired worthless. That means I get to keep my GE stock. This is actually the ideal state that I get to keep selling the premiums. I get to keep renting out, if you will, my GE every month and collecting rents against it. What if GE drops? Well, the cool thing is, is that 13 cent acts as a bit of a profit buffer. It can drop that 13 cents and I'm still in the profit. I've got a break even price of 925. There's also ways for me to collar it. I'm not going to go into too much details on this call about collaring the positions, but we like to collar the positions with protective options that shunt the risk completely, create a really high return on risk. Okay, here's some examples of returns on covered calls. 17% when the stock traded up, 15% when the stock traded water, 14% when the stock dumped. Okay, I'd like you to answer all that applies. What does investing by selling premium create? Is it an instant dividend, a discount on a security, a profit buffer, an expiring coupon? What is it? If you answered all of them, you're absolutely right. It's all of those. It's an instant dividend. It gives us a discount on our security. It gives us a profit buffer down to the break-even price, and it acts like an expiring coupon. So, okay, some more returns. I'm going to buzz through these. Here's a question, and this gets into our discussion around diagonals. How can we lower our investment increase our returns, and even convert a margin trade into a cash trade in the case of a covered put. Covered put, by the way, is a margin trade. In order to do a covered put, instead of buying a stock, we have to short a stock. So what is it? How can we lower investments? Sell out in time options, replace the security with options trading at parity, give up and buy mutual funds, or is it that we just can't? It's impossible. If you're thinking about what if we replace that security with an option trading at parity, this is a this is the correct answer, but it's also the basis of this really important understanding around diagonal debit spreads. So what's an option trading at parity? Option premium, as we talked about, is the most when the option is at the money. So when we are selling the option premium, we pick options that are at the money. But when we go deep enough in the money, the option actually loses all of its premium 
In fact, we like to target it having less than 5% premium. And it's almost completely intrinsic value. In other words, if the underlying stock moves up a dollar, so does the underlying symbol. Or, I, I, sorry, if the underlying stock moves up a dollar, so does this deep in the money option. And that's what we like to do. We substitute that expensive stock with this option trading at parity. In other words, the deep in the money option behaves exactly like the underlying security, dollar for dollar, only at a cheaper price. Does that make sense? So you might also say, well, these options have expiration dates. How far out in time should our substitute option expire? Well, we like to buy back. We like to buy that back month option with an expiration date out so that it is far enough out so that our option strategy will not, will keep being able to collect as many premiums as possible. We rather get exercised than have that back month option expiring interfere with what we're doing. So we like to go out pretty far and create for ourselves this very unique diagonal debit spread. We like to use the leaps. The leaps have the liquidity that we're usually looking for. And we usually like to go out, like for instance, right now we're recommending going all the way out to the 2021 leap because we plan on being able to collect at least seven or eight months worth of premiums on this before we're exercised. So we don't want to, like we said, have this thing expire. So that's really the whole thought behind the diagonal debit spread. So we find a substitute that trades at parity. For instance, General Electric, we just showed that example in a covered call, but the premium, uh, the option that has the premium closest to 5% is only $4.78, $4.70. As you can see here, this is the $5 call. It's deep enough in the money and it's far enough out in time and it's much less cost. So if we put that into the equation, we still get our instant dividend selling premium against it, $13 per option contract, but now we only spent $4.70. So if GE closes above $10, notice we get $5 back. That's because if we get exercised at $10, we have to go exercise the person we bought that 2021 option from. And so we get to keep the spread, hence the name spread, diagonal debit spread. $4.75, we get a $30, a 30 cent profit plus the 13 cent profit for 43. But now because the price of this thing was much lower, bringing it into the realm of folks that have smaller portfolios, we've now increased our ROI, right? We still could do it if it goes flat. We get to keep the 13 cents and do it month in and month out, already increasing the ROI and we still have that profit buffer of 13 cents. Some more returns. One last thing I just wanna graze over. How can we drastically reduce our return on risk? See, I'm gonna just tease you with this because I want them to invite me back to, to really do a deep dive on this. Should we sell half as much option premium? Should we sell out in time options? Should we collar the investment by marrying a protective option or is what I'm talking about not even possible? The answer is we can collar this thing and that's what we plan on doing. In fact, I'm just gonna show you very quickly. This is an example of a trade on Ericsson that I did. And what I want you to notice here is every time I sold premium, I would then buy a protective put. Anytime Ericsson would dip below $8, this protective put would kick in and pay me dollar for dollar for every penny or dollar below $8. In other words, it would allow me to shunt my risk. And one thing I'd like you to notice, let me zoom out on this, is notice as month and month goes by, my cost basis right after the first month dips below $8. So I'm insuring myself to $8, but now my cost basis 
Uh, in fact, right now at this point, my cost basis is now $6.98, whereas I'm insuring it for $8. What does that mean when I do something like that? Coming back to this picture, this gray line is our worst case scenario of getting bailed out. But notice after the first month, getting bailed out means we're guaranteed profits, right? We're above the break-even line, and it gets to a point where I don't even care around month four, month five, even six and seven. I don't even care if I get bailed out because the bailout consequences is almost as good as the exercise consequences. So in other words, I just let these things run and compound like any good portfolio should. So what do we have when our cost basis break-even price is less than our protective bailout price? Do we have a risk-free investment, a losing trade, too much complexity, a pipe dream, a risk-free investment? Think about this. Every time we pick a candidate, every month we're doing only three transactions. We're selling the premium. We're buying our protective option. And then a bit later, we're selling back our protective option. And then we rinse and receipt, repeat every month. Three simple transactions. I'm not asking anybody to sit in front of the computer every day. I'm not asking anybody to be an active trader. Three transactions per underlying symbol. And usually uh, with our traders, three to seven underlying symbols and your whole portfolio is vested. You've got yourself your own fund. So let's review these steps. Buy or short an underlying security or buy a substitute option trading at parity. I wanna emphasize that, buying a substitute option trading at parity. Then I want you to sell a near term at the money option for its premium value, create an instant dividend and profit buffer. There's your diagonal. And then for added protection, color it with a married option that is one month out in expiration to protect your investment. So now I've got about two minutes. How would you like to never miss a pick, minimize the amount of time you spend away from your loved ones, and have support whenever you need it? That's what it's all about. Saving time, getting clarity, creating clarity, and getting results. So. If it's okay, would it be okay for me to take a couple moments, and it really is a couple moments, to tell you a little bit about my materials, my training, and tools to see if they're right for you? Thank you. I'm going to do it. This is for someone who doesn't want to pay for multiple data subscriptions, wants everything they need in one place, doesn't want to miss any opportunities, wants to spend more time doing other things, doesn't want to do this alone, wants step-by-step -step instructions. Someone who wants to get consistent, reliable results. I'm going to, this is an amazing testimonial, but I'm going to keep going. Here's, let me show you the access to our web portal here. I just recently logged into it. This is the members only area of our web portal. And what I want to know to show you down here is in our premium selling area, we've got these different tiles. We've also got a menu where you can get the same things, but we have this premium selling screener where we have filtered out every evening. Our screener goes through about 11,000 different underlying symbols, stocks, ETF indexes, and it goes through its related option chain, which right now is numbering close to 980,000 option chain symbols. And it mixes and matches and it finds those candidates with the best bones. And it recommends these particular candidates along with our spreadsheet. So we have a tool, and here's the example we did last Thursday, where you put in your variables from the screener and you put in questions like, what is your portfolio size and risk? And the screener will actually help you pick those back month options for you, right? So the idea is then you wind up with your different plans. Here's the bull call diagonal debit spread. It tells you exactly what to do. Go long, three contracts. Do it after a bottom's found. Make sure you hit this price. It tells you exactly what to do 
in our little system. And then what we do is every um, Thursday, and tomorrow our call is going to be at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, 10, p, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, we actually go through with everybody a particular candidate. And on that candidate, we um, come up with a plan for everybody to follow. So once a week, we actually all sit together on a webinar. We usually have about 50 to 100 people on that webinar, and we create a plan. And that way you learn how we do the plan, but at the same time, you get a plan at the end because we like to earn while we learn. Uh, we also answer all your questions by private message. We have a double your money back guarantee. This is really important. Do our program for the full six months. If you don't, if you're not set up with your portfolio profiting at the end of six months, not only am I going to refund your money that you spent on the program, I'll refund two times your money. That's how no, how much I know that you can do this program. If my kids with the no education can do this with 30 minutes a day on the computer only, you can do it too. So here's what you do, and then we'll answer a couple questions. Optioninvesting.org forward slash investor expos. That's where you want to go. Uh, they'll probably put that into the chat function. If you want, if you've got your mobile device and you can scan the QR code, this QR code will do the same thing for you. Just scan your screen. Don't pass go. Don't collect $200. You deserve this. Your loved ones deserve it too. Feel free to drop me a line at aj at tradingtrainer.com or just call our office, and that's my exact extension number. Investorexpos.com will bring you to the order page, and just so that I don't leave anybody um, hanging, let me just visit that really quick. Option investing.com forward slash investor expos. And you should come to a page. Option. Did I spell something wrong? Oh, it's not dot com. It's dot org. I should know that. Option investing.org. It's part of our nonprofit. And you'll come to this order page. The price of our program is $4.97. We do have a limited number of spaces right now, so we will cut this off. But $4.97, get yourself in there with either a credit card or PayPal, and we'll take care of you. We'll get you, especially in tomorrow's workshop call, we'll get you started quickly. We got about maybe one minute, two minutes to answer some questions. I'll take a look here at the Q&A. sell premium every week on the SPX. That's Don, fantastic. Uh, I like using weeklies. Don, definitely weeklies are available. That means instead of compounding your money 12 times, you're going to compound it 52 times. I agree. Uh, I know nothing about options. I know even less now. Well, then what I recommend you do is either reach out to us or even come to our free site. Um, I have some white papers that are a little less rushed. Right here, you just click through, grab your weekly trading trainer, daily insights. I say for you, grab these white papers. Download the white papers now. It'll t show you exactly where to go access the white papers I've written over time. And there's one exactly on this particular topic. I have time for one last question. What size account should you have to start with? Folks have started with accounts as small as $800. I'll be honest, there is a critical mass that happens around $4,000. So you'll wind up working a little bit slow with a smaller portfolio. Once it gets up to about the four or $5,000 range, it will, start to, um, it will start to go bigger. And I think that's the end of my time. Hey, AJ, great presentation. So let's talk a little bit here briefly about um, the the actual uh, products that you're that you're providing. One thing everybody asks is, um, you know, how much involvement do they get with you? So why don't you talk about uh, your your involvement when it comes to your your clients and the people you're training? Absolutely. With this particular program, we actually ask, especially on your first position, that you provide us you you send your plan to us, and I personally review it and give you any sort of the gotchas. Um, 
I'm on the Thursday webinars, and so people ask me live questions during the Thursday webinars. We never end the Thursday webinar until all questions are answered. And we also have a private messaging system in our web portal there where you can ask me questions, and usually in a six-hour turnaround time, I'll get you your answers. So there's a lot of me involved in this, and that's why we have a limited number of people because I can only be so available for so many people. And so we open the doors because usually around week three or four, people get it. And so the remaining five months of the program, they're just kind of you know looking to us for support, not actually knowledge. It's not very complex. But at the same time, we only offer a couple of openings every month because of that limitation. I want to be there personally for every single member. Oh yeah, that's great. I, I, that, that's really good. I mean, being there personal, personally is, is, is really important. So we've got uh, just three minutes left here. Why don't we go ahead and um, why don't you take a case study of somebody off the top of your head, somebody that started with you. You can talk about them them I I exactly, you know, not hypothetically in their own personal situation. And you can talk about it um, a little bit more as, as it related to them. So go ahead. I, well, that's perfect. I, I'll come back to Charlene. Charlene was somebody who was a school teacher, and I think school teachers are absolutely amazing and undervalued. She had been a teacher for 29 years, and she got sick. She got cancer, and she tried to stay in the job along with her treatments as long as possible, but there got to be a point where she was just too sick, and she was actually ordered out of the classroom, and she still had 13 years before she would get her pension. So she actually had subscribed herself to passing away, and she had come to peace with that, but then she had a recovery. And that kind of sucks, uh, in, in, especially here in the States where you, you survive something, and then you're left with a ton of medical bills. And on top of that, she couldn't work, right? She was recovering from that, and it, it takes a little bit more. So she had no livable retirement coming in. She wasn't able to collect Social Security for 10 more years. So she got interested in the stock market. She met up with me. Uh, we did the same exact program we did with our foundation, the same exact program that I'm talking about today. And uh, all she does is read a daily table, as you can read in the bottom paragraph. She finds the stock she's interested in. She follows the strategy we set out for her. She uses this along with some other strategies to diversify her plan. And she recently made 14% by just spending about 15 minutes reading about the company, following the chart, and then waiting for expiration. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about using the options and the component of options that work as time passes by. Something very reliable. Very cool. Definitely a great story about Charlene, for sure. So um, before we go here, I just want to point out to everybody in the chat window, if you look down at the uh, bottom here on the GoToWebinar control panel, you'll see the link, which is clickable. You don't have to actually type this full link in. You can click it right here. It's optionsinvesting.org forward slash investor expos. Special offer that AJ has done just for the attendees here in the show. Also, you can email AJ at AJ at tradingtrainer.com, or there's even a phone number here, 970-266-8146. This is all in the chat window, and uh, you can just uh, click on that link right there and go to that, or send an email, or make a call. AJ, I want to thank you for being on the show. Um, it's great as always. You're very insightful, very helpful, and very cool. One thing I want to say is very cool what you do, uh, helping other people and helping uh, those that are less fortunate. So great to have you on the show, and looking forward to having you on again next time. Thank you. Looking forward to it.